from around the globe in sold out arenas and humble churches from out on the streets to your screen and now the time and what must be done part one on this edition of Farrakhan Speaks Greetings to you I am Louis Farrakhan, the National Representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the eternal leader of the Nation of Islam and the great preacher of freedom, justice, and equality to black people in America and oppressed people throughout the earth, and a great warner to America and the nations of the earth. It is a great honor, a great privilege, and a great pleasure for us to come to you via radio or television or social media to bring to you a very, very timely message. The title of this message, starting in January 2013, will carry through for the whole year. And that title was given to us by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The time and what must be done. This is a great subject. And each of us who are viewing this telecast or this radio broadcast has something that you and I must do in order to escape the consequences of the time. There is a verse or surah or chapter in the Quran that I shall quote as the basis for this year-long subject. It reads, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. By the time, surely man is in loss except those who believe and do good and enjoin one another to truth and enjoin one another to patience. In this Quranic chapter, time is a yardstick of measurement of consequence. By the time, surely man is in loss. So the time will determine whether we lose, whether we win whether we live or whether we die, whether we suffer privation or whether we grow in prosperity, it all depends on what we do with the knowledge of the time. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us that we're not dealing with time with the solar system. We're dealing with the time of a people and a civilization whose time has come to an end. This civilization started as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us and as it is written in the book of Genesis in the Bible, 4000 BC. 6,000 years ago. This is not the origin of our solar system or the origin of our world. This is the origin of a people 
who would bring to the earth a new civilization, but a civilization contrary to the nature of God and the nature in which the universe and the original people of the earth are created. This civilization started with a man named Adam. Many scholars say there are many, many, many Adams. Some scholars of Islam say there are 50,000 Adams, but we're dealing with the Adam that brought in this new world. He's not an original man. He's a made man from the original. And that is why the Bible says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and give them power and dominion over the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, and every creeping thing that crawls upon the earth. Well, who is the us from which a new man was made? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us and scientists bear witness that the us are the pre-Adamites and the pre-Adamites are the aboriginal people of the earth. The aboriginal people are the dark people of the earth, the black man and woman of the earth from which every species of human being has come. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. But after they were made, they were given power and dominion to rule over that which they came from. So in the Bible it is written, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. Children meaning a new people on our planet. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us and the scholars and scientists bear witness that this new people are the Caucasian people. They are on our planet. They were given a season to rule and to dominate, but not to rule with righteousness, but to rule with other than righteousness. And that rule was going to be for 6,000 years. Unfortunately for them, they caused trouble in the Holy Land after they were made and they were driven out of the Holy Land of Arabia into the hills and cave sides of Europe where they spent 2,000 years and they went completely savage, even losing the knowledge of themselves. Well, it took them 2,000 years of lost time, but they had 4,000 more years to rule, to live, to dominate everything, every people on our planet but they could not dominate until God raised a prophet for them. And that prophet was a man named Moses or Musa. Musa came to them, but they were in an horrific condition on their all fours in the hills and cave sides of Europe. They didn't know how to cook their food. They didn't know how to bury their dead. They were in a terrible condition. They were ugly and terrible to look at. The Bible says it like this, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the son of man be lifted up. Europe was a place that was wild and uncultivated, savage. 
And it is written in the Quran that it was the dog that befriended the dwellers in the cave. And at the mouth of the cave, there was the dog. And I would imagine that this is why it is said by them that the dog is man's best friend. Well, you have domesticated the dog and it surely is a great friend of man, but the greatest friend of true man is God himself. So Moses had a hard job to civilize the cave dwellers. He had to stand them up from a, a crawling position. He had to put a board in their back so that they would be upright. He had to teach them how to cook their food, how to bury their dead. And after Moses taught them and civilized them, he gave them two ways. As the Bible says, I have set before you two ways, one of life and one of death. Choose life that you and your seed might live. Well, when someone is given two alternatives, then they're in the valley of decision. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that the father of the white race, a great black scientist by the name of Yaqub. He was not an evil scientist, but he was a magnificent scientist who was born 20 miles outside of the holy city of Mecca in Arabia. And he studied the life germ of the black man and found in it a brown germ. And he learned how to separate that brown germ from the black germ and drive it into its last stage through a system of birth control. And out of that system of birth control, it took 200 years on the island of Pilon, called in the book of Revelation, the island of Patmos. It took 200 years to make a brown civilization and another 200 years to make a yellow civilization. And the last stage was white. Well, many uh, are asking how, how, how is this a myth? Is this some tale? Uh, why should we believe a myth? No, the reality is the Caucasians are present on our planet. They are not natural or native to any part of our earth, but they had a great work to do Believe it or not, even though it was a work in rebellion to the natural and divine laws of God, yet God permitted it because without their work, God would not come out of his hiding place at the end of their season of rule and choose a people that they had destroyed mentally and spiritually and morally and were in the process of destroying them physically. And then God came and interceded in the affairs of that suffering people. The scriptures teach us God's coming is after the working of Satan. So this mind that was present from Genesis to Revelation is a satanic mind. What makes it a satanic mind? Well, Adam rebelled after getting divine instruction directly from the mouth of God. He was told, you may eat of the fruit of all of the trees in this garden, except this one in the midst of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. After having direct instructions 
from God. Adam was deceived by Satan of himself. You know how it is when someone tells you not to do something, you're intrigued by that command not to do, and then you adventure out to do exactly what you were commanded not to do. That's in the human uh, makeup. We are by nature inquisitive. And so when our parents instruct us, I don't want you to go here, I don't want you to go there, I don't want you to play with this one or that one, usually we end up doing the very thing that we were told not to do, but there are always consequences for rebellion. And the greatest consequences of all are when we are given a direct order from God himself, and then we choose to disobey. Adam chose to disobey. So the scripture says, as by one man, sin entered into the world and death came also by sin. All have sinned, so death has passed to all men. Remember our subject now, it's the time and what must be done. Well, of the 6,000 years, we have already lost 2,000 for the made man in the hills and cave sides of Europe. But Musa came and taught them some of the forgotten trichnology of their father, Yaqub, but he also taught them the righteousness of the Torah. Now they had to choose which one are you going to use as a guide for your life? If you choose the righteousness of the Torah, then you will live. You will escape that which comes at the end of the 6,000 years of your rule. But if you choose to follow the tricks and lies of Yaqub, then there will be an end to that world of evil and there will be an end to that people who are called Satan that has deceived the entire world. So from Moses, you had 1,700 years of people trying to live by the law of Moses. But after 1,700 years, 300 years before the birth of Jesus, a man named Nimrod was born. And Nimrod broke the civilization of Moses and sent the people into the greatest form of rebellion. And that means that when Jesus came, he came into a world of total darkness and rebellion to the word, will, and way of God. Now, Jesus was 2,000 years too soon to bring about an end to the civilization of wickedness. Jesus came to the Jews, and unfortunately, they rejected him. He came to guide the Jewish people back to the good path of Moses, but he was rejected. And when he learned that he was 2,000 years too soon to set up the kingdom of God, he decided to give his life for the truth that he taught. But Jesus talked about one coming after him. He said one would come, but would come in his name. He would verify the truth that Jesus taught. But that one that would come after the working of Satan would come to end the world 
of Satan and in the dominion and power of the rule of those who followed Satan. You know, brothers and sisters, uh, it's very interesting in the church, particularly the Catholic Church, they talk about original sin. Original sin that the Catholics believe is born into the nature of the human being. You're right, but you're wrong. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, original sin is born into the nature of the made man who rebelled against God. But the nature of the original man is obedience to the will of God. And this is why the Holy Quran teaches us that every human being is by nature a Muslim born in the nature of submission to the will of God, all except the rebellious devil. Well, the time and what must be done. You will have a chance, I will have a chance, we will have a chance after getting the true knowledge of the time and what the time is demanding of us to be done if we don't want to be losers in this time. And then that puts all of us who hear this knowledge of the time and what must be done in the valley of decision. Now we must decide because the man like Moses that was prophesied in both the Bible and Quran is on scene today. He comes out of a savage people. That people uh, is styled in the Bible as a lost sheep, styled in the Bible as the children of Israel, styled in the Bible as mentally, morally, and spiritually dead, rejected, and despised. So as uh, the people went into a cave-like existence, until Moses came to get them up out of that existence, the Son of Man would also be in a condition similar, and God would have to come and do a great service, stand up a human being that was crawling after the similitude of the beasts of the field, a human being that lost the knowledge of self and was living the life of a beast. Well, the Bible in the book of Revelation, as well as in the book of Daniel, talks about four beasts. It's not really talking about animals, a lion, a leopard, a bear. No, no, no. It's talking about nations that have become like beasts. As the beast preys upon weak things and devours the weak to live, it has no moral consciousness. So these four great beasts have devoured human beings on our planet, devoured their nations, devoured their resources, and have preyed upon the weak of the world. The Western world has done this to all the darker people of the earth after they came out of the hills and cave sides of Europe. There in Europe, they went into darkness again. Remember the tribes that were in Europe, all of these tribes that were fighting and killing each other in their savagery. Yet they were one people, but different ethnicities of that one people. And there in Europe, they came together tribes, they formed England, tribes, 
formed France. Tribes formed Germany. Tribes formed Russia. Tribes formed the European community. But even then, they needed to be awakened. And so after Muhammad came, peace be upon him, six centuries after Jesus, in the year 570 uh, AD, Muhammad was born. And Muhammad and his followers brought the light of Islam to Europe. And that light from Muhammad and his followers caused the Renaissance of Europe. And then the Europeans came out of the confines of Europe. As the Bible says, they would be confined there for another thousand years. But after that thousand years, they would be let loose on the earth. And after that thousand years, bringing us up to about 500 years ago, the Europeans came out of Europe after fighting a hundred years war among themselves. They came out of Europe and went into the Western Hemisphere and they captured the native people and then they brought our fathers out of Africa into the Western Hemisphere, not to be citizens, but to be the burden bearers of the citizens of this brand new Western world. Those of us that were brought to the Caribbean, others were brought into Central and South America, but the worst treatment was afforded to that black man and woman that was brought to the shores of what is now called the United States of America. The first black people to arrive, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us, it was not in 1619 as the historians tell us, but he said, and history bears witness, it was in the year 1555 by an English trader named John Hawkins or John Hopkins. And that English trader brought us here, the first slaves on a ship named Jesus. When the ship went back to get more slaves, the slaves would wander down to the shores looking for that ship. And they would say, you can have all this world. Just give me that ship, Jesus, that would take me back to our native land and people. But little did those slaves know that it would be four centuries before the real ship Jesus, God in person, would come after them to deliver them from the bondage of their oppressors. Well, here we are, the time and what must be done. Now we are 2,000 years from Jesus, we are at the 6,000th year. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that the time of this world was up in the year 1914. But an extension of time was given by God as a grace period because during that time, God would come and raise up from among the oppressed a messenger from himself. And he would give that messenger guidance and wisdom and warning for America. And he would give that messenger the knowledge of the time and what must be done. Well, that has happened. The Son of Man has come as it is written 
in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, it reads, As lightning shineth out of the east unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there shall the eagles be gathered together. America is that place, and the black people in America are the sons of men that have been killed mentally by 310 years of chattel slavery where our names, our language, our culture, our history, our religion and our God were stripped from us and our original parents were killed so that they would never be able to teach us our names, our language and give us our religion. Go and study what uh, Alex Haley found out when Alex Haley was writing for Reader's Digest. He interviewed the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and he interviewed Malcolm X. And Malcolm told him that our original fathers were Muslims. They were not swinging in trees with bones in their noses, no. Those of you who are listening to this, those of you who are watching this, white and black, you know that we were some of the highest learned people of the world at that time. When we were brought to America, we were skilled in science. Who built the mansions of the South for the slave master? It was not you, it was we. Who cooked your food? Who sewed the garments for the mistress of the house? It was we who did that. Why we took the burlap that you dressed our fathers in and made garments out of it for ourselves and our children. This horrible mistreatment of black people must be accounted for. You have destroyed an entire people, yet the God of mercy has come and offered us a way to get out of the prophesied doom or to get an extension of time. Unfortunately, the only people in the Bible that got an extension of time from the prophesied destruction was the people of Nineveh under the call of Jonah. No wonder the Bible says, this wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, but no sign shall be given except the sign of Jonah. As Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. That great one who was to come did come. He came under many names, but after three years being among us, from 1930 to 1934, he gave us his real name. He said, my name is W.F. Muhammad. I came to North America by myself. It is written of him in the book of Isaiah that he looked around for someone to help him, but there was no one to help him, so his own right hand, it upheld him. And the Bible says of him 
that his hand was not too short to save, nor his arm. He came to seek and to save and to deliver that which was lost. The Bible refers to the black man and woman of America and the Western Hemisphere as a lost sheep. Now, Alex Haley, after hearing that his original fathers were Muslims, he set out on a journey to discover himself. And he found himself in the Gambia, in the village of Jufre, in the Gambia. And he found that his original fathers, named Kunta Kinte, they were Muslims. So when our fathers used to sing that song, give me that old time religion, the religion of Daniel, the religion of Abraham, the religion of Moses, the religion of Jesus. Give me that old time religion. It was good enough for them. It's good enough for you and me. Well, what was that old time religion? Oh, brothers and sisters, it's obedience to God. You may call it what you will, but Abraham, the father of Muslims, Christians, and Jews, was chosen to be the friend of God because he obeyed God in all that the Almighty had asked him to do. Obedience to God is the true religion of God. So when you know the knowledge of the time and what must be done, then you will be required to make a decision. Shall I obey man? Shall I follow the rebellious way that we have been taught? Or shall I follow the guidance of a divinely guided messenger of God that he gave us for this time. Well, what is the condition of the modern sons of men? Here we are in the ghettos of America, almost on our all fours. We are rejected by civilized society and despised. Oh, I'm not talking about the few who are somewhat educated, but trained in the way of their former slave masters and their children. I'm talking about the masses of our people. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us, no one man can rise above the condition of his people. We have a black president. We're proud that one of us has been selected and elected to that high post, but he cannot escape being a member of a people who are despised, rejected, lost. Lost in this sense means incorrigible. Lost in this sense means we cannot be healed from our condition. Scholars and scientists look at the condition of black people and say they're hopeless, they're lost. They're incorrigible. No one can correct them. And then the worst description is we are dead. We have eyes, but we cannot see. We have ears, but we cannot hear. We have a tongue, but we cannot speak a truth that has not entered our ears 
and our hearts, blind, deaf, and dumb at the mercy of our former slave masters and their children, the sons of men in a cave-like condition. This beautiful country called the United States of America is yet referred to in the Bible as a wilderness. As Europe was a wilderness, no cities, no towns, just caves and savages and wild beasts. Today in America, we have some of the most beautiful cities in the world the greatest road system infrastructure, though it needs help to be revived, bridges, skyscrapers. So we can't say that this is a wilderness like ancient Europe was, but this is a wilderness in that the first four letters of the word wilderness is wild. And that which is wild, untamed, uncivilized, uncultured, unrefined, that's the American way of life. A savage people, brutal. More jails than any nation on this earth. More prisoners in prison than any nation on this earth. More weapons in the hands of the American people than other nations of the earth. This nation has been built on violence. Uncivilized, uncultivated, brutal, wild, berserkers. And that's why the prophet gave America one of those names of a beast, both in the book of Daniel and in the book of Revelations. But God has come and he has given us the knowledge of the time and what must be done. You know, when our fathers went down to the shores of Virginia and wanted that ship, Jesus, to take them back to their native land and people, the scriptures of the Bible says, by the rivers of Babylon, we wept when we remembered Zion. Those who carried us away captive, those who wasted us, required of us mirth. And those who carried us away captive, required of us a song, saying, sing us one of those songs of Zion. And the answer came back, how can I sing the Lord's song in a strange land? We are called citizens mockingly because we are not given the rights and privileges of the white citizens of this country. Our poor people are fighting every day for justice. Even the trained lawyers who have learned law and stand in a court to fight for justice for any member of our race that feels that they need justice. The judges look at that lawyer, the juries look at that lawyer, and oftentimes our lawyers cannot get justice for us. Our black lawyers, though they've presented their case with skill and great acumen, the nerve of them to show that they can use the enemy's law to bring justice to those deprived, then the enemy looks at them and regardless of the wisdom of their fight for justice, 
the verdict comes back, not in the favor of our people deprived of justice. Wisdom coming to an uncultivated, savage people. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad asked us the question, why did Musa or Moses have a hard time to civilize Caucasian people in the hills and cave sides of Europe? And the answer is because they were savage. And we can ask that question and answer it again today. Why is it so hard to reform our people, to transform them from the mind of savage behavior forced upon us by the miseducation that we have been under for the last 150 years. In this city of Chicago, over 400 lives have been lost this year. Men killing men, boys killing boys, women killing men. Murder is the order of the day. This is a savage place and so God had to come to begin the transformation of our lives. The scripture says, be ye not conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of our minds. We're living in that time now that the message of truth will begin to renew our minds. Our minds have to be renewed. We must come out of the way of rebellion that was taught to us. This is why the Bible said we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. The institutions that have served as stewards over our lives and the lives of the American people, they're not the best institutions. Now the Pope himself is in an argument with those who want same-sex marriage. There was a time when the Pope could give a word and people would say, we got to consider what His Holiness has said. But today they are arguing with the Pope because they don't agree that same-sex marriage is against the will of God, against the word of God, against the way of God. The time and what must be done soon. In our other broadcasts coming up, we're going to go into this time, all of the elements of time. We talk today about the intervals of time from the beginning of the white race to today, 6,000 years after. The time was up, 1914, World War I, 1914, all of Europe went to war with self. World War II, 1941, Japan attacked America, but we will get into this more. Japan was goaded into such an attack, but the whole world was involved in war. And after the Second World War, we never called it a war again. Korea came up, that was a police action. Vietnam came up. It was a civil war between North and South Vietnam where America intervened. All of these things have led us to the horror of this present moment in time. And if America continues on the path that America is on, we will soon be 
in the most dreaded of all wars, World War III. And in that war, the end of this world will be completed. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad pointed out to us the people of Noah, the people of Lot, when the people and their wickedness had come to an end before God brought down his judgment, he sent Noah to preach to the people, to build an ark that the people who would be saved would get on that ark and escape that flood. Noah preached for 150 years. It didn't make any difference. The people rebelled. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, the flood waters washed away all of those people. The flood waters destroyed their libraries, the books that had been written of their events so that those uh, ways of that people would never again be learned. And the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. And it was the same in Sodom and Gomorrah. The time had come for that behavior of the Sodomites to come to an end. And so Lot was given the mission to preach to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah and call them out of a behavior that was considered an abomination in the eyes of Almighty God Allah. The Holy Quran speaks of that people and asks the question, what is this? Men coming to men with lust in their hearts as they would a female. Well, today, the wickedness of the people of Noah have gone to the ends of the earth. And the ways of Sodom and Gomorrah has gone to the ends of the earth. And America and Europe are championing now that way that is against what God has laid down as guidance for the righteous. Even the Western world is trying to get Africa in order to get loans to come away from any talk about homosexuality in a negative sense. And nations that need loans, you must agree to same-sex marriage. This is the mind of Satan. He's doing everything in his power to tempt us to go down to hell with him. But in this broadcast and the broadcasts that follow, by the grace of God, we will make God clear, we will make Satan clear, and then you have to make your decision. Will you obey God? Or will you follow Satan into the doom of this present world? There are things that all of us now will have to do. So in this broadcast, in the months and weeks ahead, America, you have something to do to escape the execution that God has planned for you. I don't say this with joy in my heart. I live in this country. I have no other country to go to, although we in the nation of Islam are citizens in every Muslim country on this earth. However, we live here, we suffered here. We have no joy in preaching doom. We have hope in preaching salvation and for America to do that which is right. Well, what is it that God wants you to do that is absolutely right? He came out of the East 
to save that which was brought out of the East and made slaves in the West. He wants us to be set free, not to be deceived anymore with false promises, not promising us some of your wealth to be near to you. God wants to separate us from you as it is written in the scriptures. He wanted to separate the children of Israel from Pharaoh and his people. He wanted to separate those in the caves from the condition of that cave and give them wisdom and make of them a great people. Well, you have become, white America, a great people. Your wisdom has brought you to conquering earth, water, space, and even time. You have become a great people from a very ugly, sad existence. Now God that brought you up is here to bring us up out of a similar condition. Don't look down on us in our condition and refuse to help us. Look at your own condition and how God helped you to come up out of your condition and know that it is not impossible for the black man and woman of America and the Western Hemisphere to come out of the condition that slavery and injustice has imposed upon us. I have enjoyed this moment with you knowing that time is coming to an end for this broadcast, but by the grace of God, we'll be back again for another hour. Please tune in, tell your friends, your neighbors, and if there's a question that you would like to ask of me, you'll find uh, I will answer you or on Twitter. And to my young brothers and sisters in the nation, take some of what I said and put it on Facebook and spread it to your friends. Let's create a dialogue on the time and what must be done. Thank you for listening. And may Almighty God Allah grant to each of you the light of understanding as I greet you in peace in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, please log on again next week and every week this year for the time and what must be done. Tell your friends, tell your family. Log on to noi.org every Saturday, 6 p.m. Central Time for truth, guidance, and unequaled love from the national representative of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam. Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Pass on the word every Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Time at NOI.org. The time and what must be done.